But the flip side of that coin, being more unique, being more exotic, and being, quite frankly, more loud than a lot of other cars, is that it attracts a lot of attention. And I mean a lot of attention, and it's not always the right kind of attention. People notice this car turns heads everywhere you go. And even in the videos I have where I was just testing out camera angles, anytime you're driving in traffic, anytime you're at a stoplight or a stop sign or an intersection, anytime you go anywhere, anytime you do anything, this car turns heads and that is not for everyone. I knew that this car was going to get some attention. I didn't realize it was going to get the level of attention that it did. Literally any single time that I am at a light and I look over at any other vehicle, that person is staring at the car. And that's not an exaggeration. Like here's some clips. Every time that I had this camera set up and like someone would pull up next to you to check out the car and like see who's driving it. And let's be clear, they're judging you 100%. They don't see how hard you might've worked for this car. They just see that you're having it and they're going to stereotype you as a result of that, which is a little frustrating, especially as someone who's worked so hard to be able to afford this. But that's the reality of owning this. And I'll touch a little bit more on that in a second. And the other thing is that there's no privacy when you have this and there's no expectation of privacy and there's constantly cameras on you. And if anything goes wrong, you know, people are immediately going to jump and point their fingers and try to laugh at you and immediately try to put you down regardless of whether or not you're at fault. So combining the amount of attention that it gets with how it looks and with people completely stereotyping it, people assume you're speeding. I get it. The car looks aggressive. It's not the most quiet vehicle. People 100% assume that you're misbehaving in this car, regardless of how you're driving it. It's ridiculous. And this is a problem with loud cars in general. So even when I had my O2 WRX, after it was modified, there's literally one time that I was going like 70 miles per hour in a 65 zone in the slow lane. People were going in both lanes next to me, 10 to 20 miles an hour faster than me, blasting by me. And there was a cop on the side of the road and he just stared at me and followed me with his eyes the entire time across his site, even though people were dusting by me like I was sitting still. So this is a problem that affects loud cars in general, but having a car like the Viper, having something a little more exotic and rare, I think amplifies it to a level that I was not expecting and that I was not ready for. The bigger problem with this is that because people are assuming you're speeding and because they're assuming you're misbehaving, regardless of whether or not you really are, they will report you to the police for literally no reason. And if you do want to go out and drive this car extremely aggressively, the chance of you getting in trouble for it are substantially higher. For example, let's say I bought a black Corvette. They make 35,000 Corvettes per year. So let's say, I don't know, 10,000 of them are black. So even when you narrow it down to a specific color, when you include all of the years, there's still enough of them around that there's probably over a thousand black Corvettes registered only in my state. But when there's a black Dodge Viper, there's maybe, and this is a big maybe, I don't know, four or five in my entire state, right? They're just significantly more rare. So as a result, of that, not only are you more likely to get the wrong type of attention and to get the police called on you, but it's also a lot easier to track you down if you actually were doing something that was questionably legal, which kind of takes away a lot of the fun of wanting to go out and rip on this car because you know that there's going to be consequences and that somebody might just be spiteful or jealous and might just call you in for the heck of it. Because that's the problem with this car is they don't look at it and say, oh, I bet this guy worked hard for it. They immediately jump to their own conclusions in their head about what type of person you are or how you got it or you know why you have this car and they don't and maybe it's easier for them to just say to themselves that your life is easier than theirs is or something like that but it doesn't really matter what the justification or the reasoning for them doing this is what matters is that the outcome of it is still going to be the same right and from what I've found and what I've experienced it usually goes in one of two ways but both have their downsides so the first is that they assume you're successful and they actually treat your opinion with a little bit more respect because they're like more impressed by the fact that you have this car that it's known as this raw driver's car and this complete death trap. So for example, the first week I had the car and it still looked like absolute crap and the paint was still a wreck. I still took it to a car show with a couple of my friends who actually have, you know, decent condition cars. And just talking to some of the other enthusiasts there, they seemed a lot more interested about what I had to say about cars and what my opinion was than any other time I've ever previously gone to a show with any of my other vehicles. Like I said, I bought this car in 2019. The opinions that I had about cars when I own this one are the same opinions I had when I owned a Mustang GT 
and they're the same opinions that I had back when I owned a WRX. There's almost 10 years of time between when I bought the WRX and when I bought the Viper. My opinions are the same, I articulate them in the same way, but for some reason, now that I have the Viper, people care about what I say. There's almost a sense of like buying into credibility or buying into status with this car. And I've tried to make this clear in other videos that that's not really who I am as a person. I bought this car because I enjoy driving it and that's why I debadged it and I left it debadged. And that's why I do a lot of the work myself and why I've released these videos about how hard I work to buy this is that this isn't throwaway money for me. This is like a significant purchase and I've worked very hard to be where I am, right? So the connotation for me of kind of just throwing money at something and then immediately having like a social status for it, that's a little bit off-putting and that's not at all what I was going for with this car. And then there's the flip side of this, but it's effectively the same thing where they think you're successful, but in a bad way. So basically they just think you're a giant so they make no effort to talk to you. They make no effort to find out who you are as a person or how you obtain the car. They just assume you're a dick. Which for me, as an enthusiast and as someone who's worked extremely hard to be able to get this car, to be quite frank, is extremely frustrating. It's off-putting. It's not a good look for not only the car community, but like the general public at large. Now, a couple examples of this. The first time I experienced this was the same week I bought the car when I took it to that car show. But I've experienced this multiple times since, is that everyone feels the need to ask you either how much you paid for the car or how much you make for income, which are both completely inappropriate questions to start a conversation with. Like if I'm having a conversation with someone at a car show and I'm like, oh, I like your car. And they're like, oh, what did you bring? And I say the Viper. Oh, I got a good deal on it. And then you lead with, oh, you got a good deal. What did you pay? That's one thing where you're having a conversation that comes up, but people are like, oh, you have a Viper. What'd you pay for that? Now, granted, I try to be pretty open about the finances and stuff with this. So I'm a little more receptive to this than a lot of the other owners that I've met are, but for the love of God, do not start a conversation with that. If you do, you have no social skills. Oh my God, that is a wildly inappropriate way to start a conversation. At least make some effort to lead in before jumping to that. The other part is that because people assume you're financially successful and that they assume that you're rich because you have this car, is that for some reason, you lose the ability to complain about the cost of anything at any point ever. But it's not even like if you bring up the cost of something, like literally, if you don't just start throwing $100 bills at people for sport, people still critique you. It's the most absurd phenomenon I've observed. And it's not like a one-time thing. These are things that have happened to me over and over and over. So for example, when I did the brakes in the car and I told people, I was like, oh, it was a lot more than I expected. It was like $700 for pads and rotors in the front. They're like, oh, that's no big deal for a guy like you. I shouldn't be surprised on such an expensive car. Oh, if you could afford the car, you could afford the bills. But again, like I'm just an enthusiast who stretched their budget to get this car, I'm doing the work myself. So $700 to me is still a significant amount of money for brakes. And I just don't know why people feel the need to be a dick to you for no reason. It just blows my mind. But it's not just the car. Like if anything else in my life goes wrong, people will still play that card. So for example, my house was built in the 1950s. My furnace was like 20 years old, it died. To get a new one, the cheapest furnace I could get was like $7,000. Most places were quoting me like $15,000 to install a furnace, which again is half the price I paid for the cheapest version of the car in the country. So here I am sitting in the winter with no heat and people are still feeling the need to critique my finances and tell me that $15,000 shouldn't be a major expense because I own a sports car, which is mind boggling. Like that that's an absurd amount of money. And people are just like, oh, that should be throwaway money for you. Like what, what, why would you think that? <laughs> but even when you're not complaining about the cost of anything at all, even when you're not on the topic, people will still make these remarks to you. And it's extremely annoying. So for example, I had to run errands one day after work. I was helping my parents move some stuff. So obviously I'm not going to take the Viper to put boxes into. That's just horrifically impractical. So naturally I took my Subaru Forester because that's what any sane, logical person would do. And this wasn't even like the sunniest day. This was like an overcast day. There was like a 20 or 30% chance of rain in the afternoon. And as I've already stated, I have no intention to drive this car in the rain ever because it terrifies me. Even so, I had coworkers go out of their way to come to my desk in the corner of the office, not even remotely close to anywhere between where they're seated and where they would have to go at any point during the day. They specifically went out of their way and made a special trip just to come by and say, oh, what's wrong? You can't afford the gas to take it in this week? Which on one hand, I get it's a flashy car. It's exotic. It's got some crazy looks. It turns heads. It gets attention. I understand that. But also the average price of a new car is well, well, well above 
what that cost. A brand new Toyota Camry with a couple options costs more than what I paid for that. A fully loaded Hyundai or Kia SUV, especially in the current car market, can cost as much as twice, two times, as what I paid for my Viper. And in fact, around the time that I bought the Viper, one of my coworkers bought an 85 thousand dollar GMC pickup truck. Eighty five thousand dollars. That's two and a half times what I paid for my Viper, which means it's also about two and a half times what both of my vehicles collectively are worth because the Subaru Forester is worth like twenty five hundred dollars. I know I'm getting on a rant here, so I think that it's just that the Viper appears to be an impractical vehicle. So I'm assuming the impracticality is why everyone just assumes you're like a multi-millionaire for no reason, but it's not a one-off thing. It's fairly consistent. It's super annoying, it's very frustrating, and it is definitely my least favorite part about owning a Viper. Following on this same line of there being connotations to ownership, just know that if anything ever happens, if you get pulled over, if there's an accident, if anything happens ever, doesn't matter what happens, doesn't matter who's at fault, you're going to get blamed. So for example, if you get pulled over in this car, it doesn't matter if this is the only time ever that you were driving a little bit over the speed limit, I can guarantee you you're going to get a ticket because the cop is immediately going to assume that you normally drive aggressively. Even if you get into an accident, if you're not at fault, they're going to assume you're at fault when they first get there. There's actually another Viper owner on one of the forums that I'm on who was going through a green light. Someone ran a red and T-boned the back of his car. And even so, when the cop first got there, they tried to write him a ticket. Fortunately, there was somebody there who was a witness or had a dash cam or something who was able to prove that they had a green light and that the other car ran the red. But even so, the cop was trying to say that they were speeding and they were running lights and that's how it caused the accident. Even even though they got teed minding their own business. So this car draws a lot of attention. And again, it's not always the right type of attention. I think that is my biggest complaint about the car. And a big part of that is I'm not really a flashy person in general. As I've shown in my other videos, I debadged the car and I left it debadged to try to reduce a little bit of that attention. But with how this car looks, there's just really no getting around that it is something unique and something special. And it's still going to draw that kind of attention everywhere you go, every time you take it out. I also have a bunch of videos on my channel where I got the car painted paint corrected and then did my own ceramic coating and the car looks a lot more expensive than what I have into it as a result of that that probably amplifies some of this effect but the flip side of that is now I always have to worry about whether or not the car is going to get damaged so then I have to worry about where I park it I have to worry about where I leave it I have to worry about door dings and scratches or is somebody going to try to sit on the hood of this thing to take a picture of it which I've seen people do to other expensive cars in public for the love of god stop sitting on other people's cars to take pictures like why would you do that that baffles me but now that's something I'm paranoid about and that does detract from the ownership experience and make it a little more stressful and I've actually done a full another video which I'll link below where I've described how the Forester I don't have to worry about any of those things and I can thrash on it and leave it anywhere and it's a completely worry-free experience so as a total ownership experience that's actually more fun but the Viper is a lot more fun to drive with all this in mind the amount that I like driving the Viper and what the car means to me personally that far outweighs the negatives because running a YouTube channel you get a lot of negative comments anyway. I've gotten very good at compartmentalization and blocking all this stuff out. But if getting attention is your thing, if you do want this car as like a flashy status symbol, this will absolutely do that for you. But for me, that was more of a negative than anything else. Just make sure you have the driver skill to back it up as well. Otherwise, it'll give you a lot of publicity in the bad sense when you inevitably crash the car. So with all this in mind, is it worth it to own a Dodge Viper?